Hello friends, welcome back to another video. Happy Friday everyone. I hope you're all doing well and hopefully all your shopping is done and you can start easing into the festivities without too much stress. I also want to say a quick thank you to you for tuning into my video today. I know it's a busy time of year and whether you've tuned in to get some inspiration or to just watch and listen along as I create this painting, just know that I appreciate you being here. As you can see, I'm working with the Miliang watercolor palette and I have been doing so throughout a lot of my shorts that I have been creating so far. And I am happy to say that those bright colors are really starting to grow on me, I'm not gonna lie. In fact, I did a short that when you see it, you're gonna say, wait a minute, didn't she already do one of these before? <laughs> and you're not wrong because I just liked this color combination so much that I wanted to try it one more time on a slightly bigger piece of paper. And so, yes, um, it will come up probably in about a couple of days. And so, you know, I am not going to keep repeating the same style but I just there was something about this color combo that I really enjoyed and so I wanted to just work with it one more time I started slightly similar but my doodles are gonna look different Look at how pretty the gold looks when it mixes with the colors. It's just so much fun. How can you not love working with watercolors, honestly? And you'd think I'd be burned out or run out of ideas by now. I don't think I've ever done so much art in such a short period of time, but I'm still here and I'm still creating and I am uh, just enjoying my time. It's been great fun. I've done this style in the past and then I kind of veered away from it. And when I was working on the shorts, um, they started to come out again. And I was like, oh, I haven't done that in a while. Let me explore some more. And again, you can do the same stuff repeatedly and it just comes out different every single time. I have another one that, a short that is, that I use different colors and, and it just looks completely different and it's just so much fun. Actually, I wanted to mention to you that if you are one of these people that is having a hard time finding um, structures or shapes within your background that you can latch on to start doodling, this might be a good idea to practice because not only do you have these areas with watercolors that you're doing, but you also have, you can incorporate almost a doodle-like 
structure with your watercolors that you can doodle in again so it's like a you know you get double the fun really so if you get stuck try this technique i feel like it um, jogs your your um, ideas much faster when you have different elements within your watercolor background I like doing this technique when I want a little bit more structure and when I want to manipulate where my empty spaces are going to be. So I know that if I put the water down like that and I drop in my colors, that's where they're going to stay. Of course, if you shake the paper or if you tap the paper, then the color will run depending on how much water you have but as long as you are gentle enough the paint will stay where you put it and that might be a helpful tip for somebody who is just starting out working with watercolors So I'm putting the rest of the colors down and adding a little bit of gold. I was going to leave that section white, but then I decided, decided to add a little bit more gold to it. And I've been using this gold so much throughout these um, vlogs that I'm almost out. Well, there's quite a bit left still, but you know, I'd like to think that soon I can go venture out and find some more gold. So in, in fact, if you have a suggestion of what kind of gold I should buy next, once this runs out, um, I would love to know. I need some pointers. I don't want to get the same stuff again, even though I quite like this palette but it's always nice to find something new to play with of course and so if you have something that you like to use i would love it if you could let me know i don't think i mentioned what kind of paper i'm using uh, i'm using the b paper again it just comes in the size that I like the most so and and it's not so harsh on my doodling pens either and it is a hundred percent cotton and unfortunately I was a little bit pressed on time so I took my hair dryer to the colors when they were wet to make them dry a little bit faster. I think had I not done this, the colors would have stayed a little bit more vibrant, but because I was speeding up the drying process, they turned out a little bit softer than I uh, wanted. But in the end, it, it turned out okay. I, I actually quite like it. I don't think I could have gone wrong with this color palette. It's just so happy. And, and vibrant. I'm glad I switched up the background a little bit because this jogs my brain to maybe come up with different doodle styles and I have noticed because I have been practicing every day that I can place my lines ahead of time and know where I want to put my dots so I can kind of place my lines and then know this is where I want to put dots later on I mean I could do it still i could add them but yeah this is something that i've noticed and i think it has a lot to do with practice and so 
I know my style now and I can predict where I want to put things even though I am still working intuitively. Does that make sense? Like I'm, I, I am working intuitively, putting down my doodles, but at the same time I know, oh, if I put these lines here, I can then, you know, add the dots later on. Anyway, I hope it'll all make sense when you keep watching. The end of the year is always a time for me to reflect as it is probably for a lot of you and I am looking back at my art journey and I am just having so much fun doing these videos for you guys and exploring new techniques and finding new art materials, checking them out. I love all your recommendations that you give me. I love that you all are there to answer my questions if I have any. So I think it has benefited my progress a lot. Also, being able to go back to my earlier paintings and compare them to what I'm doing today and how much things have changed and yet I can still see a lot of my earlier days in the things that I do now. It's just been a blast, I have to say. and. To have you all there watching along with me as I grow has been a lot of fun. I have a feeling there's going to be a shift again in how I approach my art journey, as it should. I feel there's a natural pull of how we approach certain styles or certain techniques and that is one way to grow for yourself sometimes i have a hard time allowing myself to try out new things because my mind gets so set on the things that I know how to do well. But I've been watching a lot of different content on YouTube and I've been feeling so inspired. There are a few creators that I follow that do collages and a couple that do book binding and mixed media such as like stamping or making papers that I can use in my art and things like that. So I can feel the urge to try out new things. So I guess it. this is me saying um, don't be alarmed if you can feel or, and see a shift in my content as I am starting to try out different things because that's a natural progression for me to keep exploring and to keep finding new, new techniques and, and new ways to create art. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. But I can tell you one thing, I am so excited because the sky is the limit. My 
my growing confidence in my art is something that makes me excited for the future because it opens up more possibilities for me to share my art and on the other hand it's super scary to me to make my art available for other people because right now it's just hanging up on my walls or it's stacked in a box for me to take out and look at and I know a few of you have asked whether or not I'm selling my art and I've always said no I'm not ready I, I, I am just learning I don't feel comfortable selling my art but what I could see myself doing is making prints or I would love to have washi tape with my art on it or stickers or maybe even make like a calendars and things like that. A friend of mine was saying, you should try and put your art on fabric. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> she sews and, um, you know, now she's put that, um, that thought into my head. And I'm like, I don't even know how to begin to think about what my art would look like on a piece of fabric. How crazy is that? But even if I'm not ready to sell originals, there are still other ways that I can be creative and create other things that other people can enjoy and use. I guess this is me putting it into the universe and making myself accountable to follow through. Maybe I'll just get my feet wet with a couple of things in the beginning just to see. The wheels are definitely turning. They're not quite in full motion yet, but hopefully I will get there in the new year. And if I do, I will most certainly let you guys know. But until then, I'm probably just going to stick to what I know. I feel like I have been talking for forever, so I am going to wrap things up here. I have more shorts coming out until December 24 and I'm thinking of doing just a recap of what I have been creating and I might put that in a long form video just because it, it takes more time and that was probably the easiest way to approach that and then um, I may or may not have either one or two more videos uh, for the rest of the year. And then it's already the new year. So things are moving fast and that's the way it should be. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week.